All right, Melinda, welcome to the Easy Conversations podcast. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I'm really excited for our conversation. Uh, we're going to be talking about improv, just so the listeners know. But uh, before we get into it, I do want to give you an opportunity to introduce yourself to the listeners and let us know a little bit about who you are and what it is that you do. Hey, well, thank you, first and foremost, for having me today. Yeah, I'm Melinda. I'm an actress in Hollywood. I grew up on a farm in middle America and decided to come to good old Hollywood about 20 years ago. Oh my gosh. Yeah, and I've snagged a few TV roles and movie roles and a lot of acting classes and improv classes. Later, I discovered personally I decided to take improv class and study the art of improv as a way to improve my acting and my audition techniques. And then eventually I started to realize, holy moly, I'm using my improv skills in my personal life, mm-hmm. in my day life, when in my communicating with my agent and casting directors. And I thought, oh my gosh, that makes sense because life is one big improv and we're improvising our way through it every day the store and the conversation you have with the checkout person is improvised Mm. you know have a script when you left the house what you're going to say when you got to the store so life is just one big improv and you are the star improviser of your life and i thought wow wouldn't it be great to teach improv to just everybody who wants to learn improv as a basic life skill? Mm-hmm. And that's what I started to do on Zoom. Actually, right now, every Monday night, I teach an improv for life class. And my students have consisted of realtors, lawyers. I have a junior high science teacher. Mm-hmm. That's a amazing- improviser right there mm-hmm. uh, waiter go waiters those are some, some, some improvisers i had a security guard hairdressers and it's just been a lot of fun and everyone is, walks away with a lot of great life skills while having fun yeah no that's amazing and you and i've chatted offline before and we've talked about how improv can be beneficial when it comes mm-hmm. to mental health Absolutely. I recall reading in the book, The Body Keeps the Score, which I've referenced on this podcast many times, but there is an aspect of even improv, more from a play perspective when it comes mm-hmm. to trauma, yeah, you're able to improvise through and act out whatever you may have been experiencing or some of the traumatic experiences that stick with us and being able to work your way through that. So there's definitely tons of value there. And it sounds like the people that are signing up for your classes and attending are coming from all walks of life. And they obviously Mm -hmm. recognize the importance of improv and and sounds like they're implementing it in their life as well. Yes, absolutely. I'm glad you mentioned the mental health aspect. I think it's so important. The one thing I've noticed with all my students mm-hmm. in improv for life. They're all adults, so 30, 40, I have some in their 60s, their 70s. And, imp- and improv reminds us how to play. Yeah. As adults, we forget how to play. When I say play, like we were kids, that yeah. abandonment of there's no agenda, but to have some fun. Mm-hmm. Somewhere along the line, society or someone tells our little kid inside you got to grow up you can't play anymore life's not all fun and games right Mm -hmm. so in improv we remember how it was to play and to be silly and to laugh and my experience through teaching this and doing it myself it's so important i love that ralph waldo emerson himself once said Be silly, be honest, be kind. Mm -hmm. That's a quote. He put silly, honest, and kind together. Silly coming in first. Important traits 
And I really think it's so true. I was just reading an article on the Mayo Clinic website. Mm-hmm. It's a very prominent medical hospital in America, in Minnesota, actually. And they did a whole section about, about being silly and laughing and playing how important that is for overall health. It's backed up by science that when we're laughing, mm-hmm. stimulate our organs because of oxygen flow. We soothe our tension because it stimulates the circulation. And improv is really good for the immune system. Mm-hmm. Science has shown it's those negative thoughts that we suppress and we suppress that can have a chemical reaction and affect our bodies by bringing more stress into our system. And that's what can cause disease. Yeah. Yeah. And lower our immune system. And this is what I thought was so fun and interesting that I read on the Mayo Clinic site. Laughter and fun is a pain reliever. Did you know that when you laugh, laughter causes your body to produce its own natural painkiller? Mm. I'm not a doctor. I'm just an improv (laughs) teacher. But I really think there's something to just every day giving yourself permission to play, laugh, be silly. If that means watching an old I Love Lucy rerun so you can laugh, that's what you do. Yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. Thank you for sharing all that. And I do want to come back to the topic of play because I think it's so important and we lose sight of it as, as we become adults. But uh, I do want to understand for, from your perspective, as you've started to delve into improv, how has that benefited you and, and what are some of the, the things you've realized going through, not only through acting, but building on the skill, I would say, of improvisation like how has that benefited you on a personal level one i was going to piggyback on the whole play one more thing i wanted to mention i know that when you allow yourself to play Mm -hmm. you become a better problem solver Mm -hmm. and why that is because play triggers your imagination yeah and you to really exercise that muscle of imagination and it takes imagination to be a problem solver which I think is great in your life and in your business, especially if you are in corporate America and you got to, we're always problem solving when we go to work. Yeah, absolutely. And one of the things in my personal life is a couple of things. I overcame a childhood stutter. Mm. I stuttered growing up and improv really helped me to just get comfortable in my own body, be in the moment, trust my instinct, Mm -hmm. and to tolerate uncertainty. Because when you're improvising a scene, there's no script. You have no idea what's coming up next. You and your scene partner are building that scene together. So it's a lot of uncertainty. And you learn to tolerate that and move with it and trust yourself. Yeah. In those ways. So how was, you know, obviously there's this aspect of being able to trust yourself, but you obviously have to get to that point. So I'm just imagining myself doing improv, for example, and Mm -hmm. it would be, there'd be a lot of nerves there in the beginning and, there's a lot of nerves there the whole time. Okay. <laughs> no okay. How long you been doing it. <laughs> All right. Even better. There's a lot of nerves, right? Absolutely. So how are you able to overcome that in the moment? And to your point, be present and, and obviously be able to respond on your feet. You're basically thinking on your feet and, and responding. Yeah. We, you learn basic skills. The number one rule of improv is yes and. Mm -hmm. Yes, I accept what my scene partner has said or what my scene partner has given me. And I'm going to add something to it and give it back to him. 
and my scene partner will then accept what I gave, yes, add something to it, give it back to me. Mm. And that is a great way to give and take and build together mm-hmm. versus if you say no, that's a denial, it will, you'll be stuck in the mud. Then you'll really have a reason to be nervous because you're not moving forward. Yeah. Number one rule is yes and. Listening. You cannot yes and your scene partner if you did not hear what mm-hmm. they said. Mm-hmm. So that really, that you're in it together. There's a saying in the improv world, bring a brick, not a cathedral. And you learn you're not responsible for building the entire cathedral. You're just responsible for one brick right. at a time. Yeah. Which helps with the nerves. And I always tell my students to, from my personal experience, especially as an actress, when I'm nervous, oftentimes it's because I'm watching myself and I'm judging myself and, oh my God, do they like me? Is this going to turn out? But if I throw all my attention onto my scene partner, onto where we're at and really start listening, get the focus, get my focus mm-hmm. off of me. Yeah. And it's somewhere else. It really helps let those nerves go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's almost similar to meditation where you're focused on the present moment rather than anything else that may be going around you. You're really dialing it in and paying attention to what's happening in that moment. And I could see why that is helpful from a mental health perspective too, because you're very similarly to meditation, again, becoming in tune with the present moment. So that makes sense. And I guess one of the rules I heard of improv was that you're not allowed to say no. If you're there, you're it's yes and. <laughs> yes. And I'll tell you a little story about the yes and rule. It also applies to my personal life. Yeah. Is I tell people the number one rule of improv is yes and. Mm. Yes. Say yes, say yes to life, get out there, say yes. That puts you in your power. Mm-hmm. Of course, somebody always says, what if life gives you a bad situation? What if you're in an abusive relationship? What if your dog is dying? What if your purse got stolen? Am I, am I supposed to say yes to that? And my answer is yes. Yeah. My, about five years ago, my father was diagnosed with Alzheimer's. And at first I was like, oh, no, no, not my dad. No, mm -mm, no. I put my head in the sand. I was in denial. My family was in denial. And there sat my poor dad because the Alzheimer's was not going to go away because we all decided to say no to it. And so in this situation, I realized, oh, saying yes to Alzheimer's is saying Yes, I accept what's Mm -hmm. happening. Yes, I accept my dad has Alzheimer's. So now, and now I have my, I'm in a power position where I can now make some choices. Yes, my dad has Alzheimer's and I'm going to go with him to the doctor. Yes, I accept my dad has Alzheimer's and I'm going to find him the best caregiver as I possibly can. Mm-hmm. Yes, my dad has Alzheimer's and I'm going to go home and visit him more often. And I'm going to play music from the 1950s, the year when he was in high school. And we're yeah. going to have picnics on the living room floor. So I felt like I took my power back in situations such as Alzheimer's where you often feel powerless. Mm. Uh, yeah and I, and I appreciate you sharing that because that is essentially you, you can draw the parallel between improv and, and life in general that things do happen um, and we could sit there and try to push back and resist or to your point accept and, and move forward right and a lot of these situations that happen to us they've happened as much as we don't like them, we can be in denial, but they're not going away. And I think that there's, to your point, it is powerful to be able to say, 
okay, this has happened now. How am I going to respond? And that's where our power lies, right? Exactly. The, the power comes from saying, yes, I accept this. And now I get to add something to it. Yeah, for sure. And, and to your point, that applies to improv as well. And then coming back to play, I know you touched on it, but there, it's to me, as much as I, I as you grow older, you, you take on responsibilities, certain things happen in life and mm-hmm. you lose touch with your child like self. And that's where play is so important. And the more I've delved into spirituality or just mental health in general, there is something to be said about getting back to that childlike Mm -hmm. uh, personality or just having that, as you mentioned earlier, uh, imagination or just that level of curiosity and exploration and just being able to play, which can make life a lot lighter and i think the more serious we become the more we get out of that aspect of play we just continue to just it feels like you're just going through the motions every day and that's it right you're you're going to work you're you're taking care of all your responsibilities you're paying your bills whatever it is and the d- days just fly by and mean and meanwhile you're not really finding anything meaningful or or purposeful because you've lost touch with that aspect of play. What are your thoughts with all of that? I agree. Yes. And when you were saying that I, the word trudging along came to mind Just trudging along, and you're like, Oh, when I retire, I'll play golf. (laughs) We're not all guaranteed to live long enough to retire in golf or we don't know if our shoulders are going to let us swing that golf club, yeah. I, we have to just right now, we, you've talked about the power of now and improv really teaches you to be very present because mm-hmm. right? don't be a minute behind a second forward. Your power is right here in the now and playing just opens you up to so many possibilities and it's whatever Play doesn't necessarily mean you got to go take out your own Monopoly board or you need to skip down the the street. Play is whatever makes you feel good, Mm -hmm. joyful. And I always think a good indicator that you're really having fun and you're really playing is you've lost track of time. Yeah. When I decide I'm going to give myself some time to play when I'm at home, I have to set a little timer (laughs) if I have to be somewhere. Yeah. you lose track of time. With all that said, yes, we have to be responsible. We have to go to work. We have to make sure we get to work on time and make time for traffic and pay our bills. But yeah, play really, I think it it, it just opens you up. It opens up your imagination, your goofiness. And I think really for me personally, it gets me really in touch with my inner child. Mm-hmm. When I say inner child, that's the little girl I used to be. And I think we all carry around our inner child. Yeah. And they love to play. And sometimes I notice when I'm playing, here's what's part of the mental health comes in. I'm playing, I'll it's almost like my inner child will tell me something. At this aha moment or this aha moment. Oh my gosh, I just five, six months ago in play, I've my entire adult life, I've had this weird thing. I'll go to a party, I'll go somewhere and I'll have a good time. And then I come home and I think everyone hated me. No one likes me. Oh my God, I I can't believe. Oh my gosh. And I sit there mortified and I'm like, Mm. why? Those are some of my best friends. Why do I think no one liked me at the party? So I was playing and doing my inner child work. And I had this moment, I heard my inner child say, Rita told me one day that no one likes me. Mm. And I was like, what? And I had forgotten when I was in second grade, I was in gym class, everything was going great. I was a happy little second grader. And this little girl, a little girl, a little fellow seven-year-old, Rita came up to me and said, hey, you know that no one likes you. And I went, oh no, I didn't know that. Really? And I and I thought, oh my gosh, I'm still carrying that 
with me (laughs) decades later. But it was during play and just having fun that my inner child said, hey, remember how Rita said no one likes us? And I went, oh, we're going to sit down. So I sat down with my inner child and I said, that was a lie. That Mm -hmm. she was wrong. Yeah. Yeah. He was not. So my adult self could talk to my inner child and just go, Rita was wrong. When Rita, when I thought back, I was like, oh, yeah. She, when I looked at her life as a adult looking at little Rita, I was like, oh, yeah, she probably had a tough little childhood, that little girl. Mm-hmm. And so she probably was just projecting. Is that the word? Yeah. So I just had to really sit down with my little girl and say, we're, we're going to stop playing for a second and let's talk about Rita. And that was wrong. Mm-hmm. Okay. So we're going to let that go. And so I still go to parties and go, Oh my God, people don't like me. But then, I, but, then, but then I go, wait a minute, that's Rita. And Rita was wrong. And then I feel better. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I play. For sure. Yeah. And I think there's uh, something to be said about being able to express uh, or give that, childlike expression otherwise you end up unconsciously expressing it in different ways and perhaps uh, in those cases it's maladaptive or or unhealthy Um, Mm -hmm. and Carl Jung talks about that to a certain extent so I do see some truth to that so it's being able to give ourselves that opportunity to have that childlike expression and as you mentioned earlier it needs to happen in balance. It's being able to schedule that time, not Mm -hmm. engaging in that all the time, but yeah. You skip around the office. Maybe you could, but. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I think there, there, there's something to be said about that whole notion of play. And and like I said earlier, um, the more I think about it, I think it's, it's crucial because we, a lot of us, myself included, we lose touch with that, that side of us. And then, end up just missing out on joy in our life as you mentioned like when we're not able to give ourselves those opportunities to have those expressions yeah i think uh, and for your listeners who are practical when you play as i mentioned it, it does involve imagination and creativity so you open up it's really great for the was it is that the right side of your brain that's the creative side yeah and creativity in a practical sense and imagination, like I said, that's problem solving, that's making new choices, that we use creativity and imagination mm-hmm. every day in our lives. If you're making dinner and you're out of onions, you got to create something else, right? That's creativity. You go to the office, your boss is like, hey, that delivery didn't come in, but we need it. What are we going to do? You can use your creativity and your play and find a solution. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, it's all of it is crucial. And from, I guess, for people that perhaps want to get more involved in improv or want to learn more, what are some ways they can do that? Because for me, I, I would probably look around locally, but it's not something that you can easily find. But how do you get improv classes or sign up or I would definitely just Google improv classes near me if you're in a larger city, near a city. Uh, you can always come and audit my class. It's on Zoom. It's 7, to, seven o'clock to 9 o'clock Pacific Standard Time every Monday night. Hmm. So you can contact me. I'm sure we could, I could leave my email. Or something. Yeah. We'll put yeah. that in the show notes for sure. Yeah, I just say... I, Saw you on Easy Conversations. <laughs> and yeah, but definitely look for improv classes near you. You can also often Google, go on YouTube. People are always doing little improv tutorials on YouTube. But there's also improv games you can just play by yourself or with friends at yeah. home. Yeah, for sure. And I know you said you wanted to do a, maybe a demonstration, so... Uh, yeah. I feel, I, I'm throwing my, but, uh, <laughs> okay. Here's a fun one that we can do. I just did this in my class last night. This is a little warm up. All right. This will force you to listen 
and to be a little creative, okay, and trust your instincts. It's called, let's see, oh, bear with me, first letter, last letter. Okay. Okay, so we're going to have a conversation. The last letter of my sentence would be the first letter of your sentence. Okay. Okay. So if I were to say, I have to go home and feed my cat. Cat ends in T. So you might say, there's not enough time for you to feed your cat. We're late to the movies. Okay. Okay. All right. Got it. You want to try it? Uh, yeah, let's do it. You can start and I'll follow your lead. Okay. I'm so happy we came to the beach today. Yes, it was a great experience. I'm happy too. Oh my gosh. Was that a whale jumping out of the ocean? Nope. That's a shark coming right at us. So scary. This is like Jaws. You think he'll come flying up on the beach? I I want to see him fly up on the beach. However, <laughs> however, I don't know if that's a good idea because this shark may take us down as well. Likely, but I probably shouldn't wish such ill will on the shark. After all, he can't breathe. He needs the waters. I hope he stays in the water. That's probably a good call. And let's <laughs> both hope he stays in the water. <laughs> really crazy, but I've got to tell you, I had a dream about that movie Jaws last night. Tell me more. <laughs> Every Saturday night, I have a reoccurring dream about Jaws. It's the strangest thing. Gosh, that sounds uh, like quite the dream. How long has this been happening for? Right about since the time I was 12 and saw Jaws in the theater. Everything's starting to make sense now. <laughs> All right. How'd that feel? That was uh, definitely, I wasn't adding a lot there, but <clears throat> yeah, that was cool. That was not as bad as I thought. So yeah. That's more of a, a warm up. Yeah. It's a great little brain teaser. It gets, it's, I think it's great for both sides of the brain because the left side, the, anal the analytical is looking for the letters, whereas yeah. the right side is also do the creative things, the game balanced game. Yeah. I think you're very good at improv. Well, I don't know about that, but I appreciate it. You're being very kind, but I do. So here's the thing though. I did feel again, very present moment, very mm -hmm. focused. And I was able to just shut everything off because I'm just so focused on what you're saying and also in trying my best to continue the story, right? So I'm waiting for that letter and I'm also following the story. So, uh, yeah. If for the listeners, I would highly recommend it. If even if you're having a rough day, right. I'll just if try it out. You are with your kids. If you're having a rough day too. Yeah. I do it sometimes by myself. I'll just talk to myself and every sentence I have to start the next sentence with the last letter. It's a great way to get present because there's so much going on, isn't there? It seems yeah. simple, but you are thinking of the story. You're listening for the last letter, thinking of the first letter. And you don't have time to worry about your credit card yeah. bill. Yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. No, that was great, Melinda. Thank you so much. And uh, for listeners that do want to get a hold of you, I know you said you were going to share your email, but what are some other ways that they can find you? and learn more about uh, yourself. You can definitely find me at my website, which is Melinda Chilton, 
improv.com. Chilton is spelled like the Hilton Hotel with a C in front of it. <laughs> Melinda Chilton, improv.com. And you can also find me on Instagram at Melinda underscore improvise life. Great. Yeah, I'll put all that in the show notes. So thank you so much. And thank you again for coming on here and sharing your story and also indulging me with a little bit of improv. So I appreciate it. You did very good. I, mean, I just threw that at you. You did very good. Thank Two you. Two thumbs up. <laughs> awesome. Thanks. <laughs>